Microsoft just launched one of the most transformative innovations within ERP. The Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations MCP server isn't just any MCP server. It's not just an endpoint for agents to access discrete specific functionality. It's actually a dynamic tool for them to navigate and work across all of the information inside of your ERP system, meaning that you can explore, understand and act on any data inside the ERP system and also perform any action that you need it to. This works across all past, present and future capabilities from Microsoft, our thousands of partner solutions in the solution and any customer extension that's there all without writing a single line of code. This is because it's an application-centric and metadata-driven approach that does not work on discrete functions, so you have to create every single functionality by hand. It also works with your security, so all of the role-based investments that you've done can also be applied to this, working across all the roles and all the privileges that you already set up. Welcome to the future of Agentic ERP. Welcome to Microsoft Dynamics. What is an MCP used for in the context of business applications? In short, it's an endpoint designed for LLM agents to access specific knowledge, tools, and prompts, basically for a given scope or domain. So for instance, in a sales MCP, you might include guidelines and product data, industry insights, and so on. You might have tools connecting it to a cloud CRM, where you can list customers, get customer information, and create an opportunity. But for ERP, we need a different approach. It's an entirely different beast. You can't just scope it into one MCP server. The scope runs across finance and supply chain, HR, manufacturing, warehouse management, accounts payable, accounts receivable, you name it, it's all there. So building a single MCP point to cover all of that is simply not feasible. That will simply break. That's why we took a different approach. So instead of hard coding flows and exposing static tools, we built an application-centric meta layer now the MCP server can dynamically explore the ERP system, just like a user would. It retrieves menu structures, it can drill into specific areas and forms, and it can discover the availability of actions and data in those forms and work and reason on top of those. Agents are locked into predefined paths, they can navigate freely and act with precision. Another benefit of this unique approach is that agents can operate with the same role-based access model as users can. You can control the permissions and the policies with the same granularity, which means that you can operate with the same security. And you can also scope the agents to have defined scope and so you can build compliant automation with no added user training needed. Now, let's see it in action. Today I will be using Copilot Studio, but you can use any studio that you want. This is the tools that I've added, the MCP server. It's a connection through to the AOS. And you see the only thing I've added is the credentials. And what I get back in return is the tools. So these are the 14 distinct tools that it uses to navigate and filter and click buttons and do all of the things that it needs to. That's it, it's set up in seconds and you can actually use it out of the box. Now let's go ahead and try it out. So let's create a customer order for um, Cave Wholesales, which is a company that's in the database and we're gonna be doing that for 24 pieces of badminton records. So we just enter the quantity, the item name, and the customer name as well. So now it will go in and it will create a new order. And so you can see it actually goes in, finds the right menu item. So it's filtering for the sales orders menu item. And it opens up the sales order create form, goes in and adds the customer. And you can see it actually called the right control. It gets in and finds the customer accounts and add that as well. And then it goes down to the grid inside of the form and tries to add here a customer account number is done and continuing on it clicks OK and waits for the system to react and give you the actual form. So now it's created a sales order and now it's creating a sales order line and it's saying oh no there seems to be a configuration error. What do we do? Can we ask it to fix it? Check this out. This is what blew my mind when I first tried this out. I was trying to challenge it to create a sales order. I got a mistake. And then I just asked it, can you please fix it? Which deeply understands the root of the, the root cause of the problem. Then it goes out and figures out how to mitigate it. I need to add some data in here. I have to click all of these buttons and make it work. And then it comes back to me. 
After doing all of this, it even clicks the enable button on this new data, which puts it into action. And the problem seems to be fully resolved. And now it also even asks me, hey, do you want me to just continue? I just say yes. And it understood where it fell off. It's now fixed the problems that I actually had with my system. And now it continues to find everything that it needs. So again, it goes out, looks where it can navigate through, figures out where it kind of left off, goes in and filters, navigates to the right order, and actually opens that up again. Then it comes back and it asks me, hey, so it doesn't ask me, it just tells me that now I'm going to proceed by adding the lines, which it failed on previously. Okay, so what it does, it goes down on the item ID, it finds the right item, it understood that it was item 1000, which it had called from the actual lookup. So it used the name and found the item ID, enters all of this, and there you go. Now the badminton records are successfully added to the cave wholesales with a quantity of 24 and we're done. That is a perfect execution of a complex task that was sorted out by this agent. So let's compare a couple of transactions or data inside the system. And this is where you see the agents kind of work across different legal entities. Now, this might be a pain point when you do implementations where you have to kind of go back and forth between different legal entities. It's really easy to just ask it to compare and the differences and understand what it is. And then we can ask it to actually perform afterwards. So after getting the tools, it will go look up the different forms and different legal entities right here. You see it searching for USMF. And then it also see it calls the same item menu item back there, which is for DEMF, which is the other company that I asked it to actually get this information from. And now it goes out and it compares these. So now you see it lists all of the different groups as I told it to, and then I asked it to compare these. What are the key differences? What is DEMF doing? Or how's the setup different between these two legal entities? And then it would also say, do you want me to export this to Excel? Well, I say, hang on. Let's compare to another company as well. How does these two compare to this other company? Now it will, because it understands the context, it will also go out and find that single information. See, it costs the same menu item, gets the same data, pulls that into the context window, and now goes out and says, well, here's some comparisons from the USMF customer groups. Here's the DEMF customer groups. Here's the COCO customer groups. And you see, there's a big difference. COCO has a very different buildup than DEMF and USMF. Perfect. That's something that we actually can build off of. And now we can instruct it to go fix it. Or how do we get closer to this? So I'm really happy with the results here. Let's move on to the next example. For this final example, I thought I'd spice it up by using a different AI agent. And this time I'm using Visual Studio Code. And here you can see the prompt. It's pretty complex. It runs through multiple steps. So we have to create an item, set up the default auto settings, go ahead and do a minimum coverage group for a quantity of 20, do accounting journal, run master planning, and everything is running using Claude Sonnet 3.5. So you can use any model. I'm just going to show you how that works. So here it goes. It starts off, connects to the MCP. Now I've just connected it. I haven't done any kind of system prompts or anything. It's just running out and figuring out everything on its own. So we'll speed it up and we'll stop when we get to an event that happens. So let it just work. And already it's created the item. So it's run through and created the item that we wanted to. We now have a tennis racket product that we can use. So let's up, set up some default order settings. And it's done that. Now continue on to set up some coverage groups for it. And it goes in, figures out where it has to go and just connects everything up. And there you go. Now, for the final one, let's count in an item of 18, the quantity of 18. And now hopefully that should work pretty smoothly as well. Ah, you see it requires item cost price. I didn't tell it to do it, but it figured out by itself because it tried to do something. It got an error back and then it just said, right, let me try and fix that. And so it does. It actually creates a costing version for this with a price of one. That's fine. We're just going to count it in. We can do finance adjustment later. But to perform what I said, let it just work and let's see what it does.
So after a little bit of work, it has now actually posted and activated the cost price. So let's go in and finish the work by posting the counting journal that it created. And there you go. A quantity of 18 has been counted into inventory and we'll continue on by running master planning. It asked me for allowing to actually trigger that menu item. So it actually says it can't and it will actually summarize everything. So it summarized everything it did. And then it, the final answer here is actually because I did all of this, I expected the master planning to have this result. So happy. I would say that this is a good result, right? We can go in, we can run master planning manually, but it did everything else and it fixed its mistakes or the errors that it got. So let's go ahead and look at the results. So here we are inside of FNO. Let's open up the released products. Let's filter on and figure out where my item is. And here we are. A brand new tennis racket is in my product list. I can watch the inventory. This should be 18 because that's what we counted in. And there you are, 18. And the next step is to look at the inventory. Let's go in and view the, here's the default order settings. Everything is set up as it should be. Excellent. And then the final step is the item coverage on the plan, item coverage. And there you have it, a minimum quantity of 20. All done. Now, I hope you are as excited as I am about the new MCP server for FNO. It was mind blowing when I started using it to see some of the examples that it actually could do. Running master planning as well, I asked it actually to go in and check up on some of the parameters that I set up. It went in and actually started working with some of these that came back with some performance suggestions that I should really look at. And it's just mind blowing to think about that you can ask it to go and figure out stuff like investigate this domain or have I set this thing up correctly or am I missing something here? And then it will go in and actually give you a report and ask like, should I just go fix it? The only thing you can do is answer yes, goes in, sets up. Now be aware that this can do anything. It can also do harm to your system. So make sure that you're not running into production yet. Make sure that you set the right scopes. Make sure you also set the security guidelines because you can just set up and give it access to a specific security role, which will also limit the scope of what it can do and increase its performance, right? We know that when you give a, a certain scope to these agents that they will be higher precision on what they're actually doing and what you want them to do. So maybe ask it to go ahead and do a specific task as opposed to doing a broad one, but also explore these broad things in your demo setup and how you've done it, because it can really help you make a better system, increase your efficiency and do full automation as well. Don't think of this as just a chatbot, but truly something that can be building fully automated processes inside of your ERP system in a whole new way. Things that we never even imagined or things that I haven't imagined. So, Good luck and go try it out and comment down below if you have any suggestion of what you want me to try out or what you should try out or what you're using it for and happy taxing. Thanks for watching.